Hey guys, I'm Katie and welcome to Amend and Nourish. Today we need to start on some much needed yard maintenance. Everything is growing like a weed, quite literally. We also need to clean up our composting area and get started on a new compost pile. We will be using all of our grass clippings we get today and the materials we got out of our raised beds when we cleaned and amended them a few weeks back. These are excellent sources to start a compost pile. I also want to get our calendula spot cleaned up and get those planted as well. And then we have a fun little yard foraging project we're going to do with some dandelion flowers, which I'm really excited about and I can't wait to share with you. I am a little skeptic on this recipe, but we'll have to wait and see how it turns out. So stay tuned for that. But first, let's get cleaning up this yard. When making compost, I try to keep my ratios of browns, which is carbon, and greens, nitrogen, equal. Now this doesn't happen every time, but this is what I aim for. Some examples of brown or carbon filled materials are things that are dead, like dried up leaves, wood chips, dryer lint, paper, cardboard, etc. For nitrogen or green materials, you can use food scraps, coffee grounds, tea bags, animal manure, grass clippings, and so forth. making a lasagna, layering and alternating between brown and green materials. I save and shred old papers and cardboard boxes and add those in as well. Just remember, the smaller the material, the faster it'll break down. too. These materials are fairly damp, so I will add water the next time I go to turn the pile. I will turn this pile at least once, maybe twice a week, depending on the internal temperature and if time allows. The more you turn it, the faster it'll break down. I can go into more detail about how we compost in an upcoming video. Welcome to my kitchen, you guys. Yesterday while mowing the grass, I came across a whole bunch of dandelion flowers. And it got me thinking about an article I read about making your own syrup or also jelly out of the dandelion flowers. So I came inside, grabbed a colander, and out we went and we picked a whole bunch of flowers. Before you knew it, we had the whole colander full. I brought them inside, put them in the refrigerator, and back out I went to finish my chores. If you don't have the space to make a compost pile, there are many alternate methods you can try, such as worm bin composting, compost pickup services, or a great online service called Share Waste. Connecting people who wish to share their organic materials with neighbors who are looking for scraps to use in their own composting efforts. There are many ways for us to do our part in trying to keep this beautiful home we call Earth alive and well for generations to come, and composting is one of them. Now we're gonna clean up this area for our calendula plants. Calendula is a great plant to have on hand. I dry the flowers and save the petals to make infused oils that I use in homemade creams, lotions, and ointments. It has great healing and soothing properties. It's antifungal and antibacterial. I really enjoy using calendula cream on my hands. It's really soothing and hydrating after I have been playing in the dirt all day long. We are planting the strawberry blonde and the snow princess calendula in this spot. After finishing up all of our chores, we then came back inside and we started the process of making the dandelion tea. To do so, you take all of the flowers and you separate the petals from the green portion of the flower and discard the green portion and you measure out the petals. We needed two cups of lightly packed petals for this recipe. I was quietly whispering to myself, he loves me, he loves me not, over and over again for about 15 minutes. We then measured four and a half cups of water, brought that up to a boil on the stove, and then poured the boiling water over our petals in this glass container. 
I will link the blog post and recipe down below so you may reference it if you would like to. We then let this sit out on the counter until it came to room temperature, covered it, and then threw it in the refrigerator for over 24 hours. Our petals have been soaking for about 24 hours now, so we're gonna remove this cover and then we're gonna strain the petals from the liquid to get our dandelion tea. You definitely want to forage clean dandelion flowers only. Avoid anything that has been sprayed with any sort of herbicide. Now we have completely removed all of the liquid from the petals. We now have a lovely dandelion tea that we're gonna make our jelly out of, and I'm just gonna discard these petals and put them in the compost. But before we get started on the jelly, we need to get all of our water bath equipment out, we need to clean our jars, and also get our ingredients out. So let's get going on that. boil again, set a timer for one minute. Remove from heat and quickly fill your jars before the jelly has a chance to set. Leaving a quarter inch headspace, clean the rims with some vinegar and put a ring on to finger tight and into the water bath they go. hints of lemon in it. It reminds me of those honey sticks that you get to swirl in your tea that have like the lemon flavor. It pretty much tastes exactly like that. Oh yeah. We will definitely be making this again. I highly recommend trying this if you have a bunch of dandelions in your yard. Really good. I could see this as a syrup as well, adding it into drinks or like making a lemonade or something with it. So good. Thank you 
so much for joining me today in the kitchen. That was a fun change of pace. I'm so glad that we tried this recipe. I was not disappointed. You should definitely give it a try for yourself. We ended up with three half pints and five of the quarter pints, so that'll be great stocked up in our pantry, and we will definitely be making this again. And if you guys liked today's video, you know the drill. Please hit that thumbs up or subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.